Today in our 2015 Chevrolet Traverse, we're going to be test fitting the Yakima Ridgeback 4 bike rack for inch and a quarter and 2 inch hitches. Part number Y02458. We already have a bike installed on our rack. Let's go ahead and take a closer look here. Starting with our end, ends of our arms here, we do have the patented Yakima bottle openers. Moving on to the cradles, they are going to be stationary, meaning they can't move back and forth, but they do have this cushion TPE cushion, and that's going to help absorb the shock and help protect the frame of your bike while traveling. And the bottoms, or I should say the tops, of our zip strips are also padded to provide that extra protection as well. Moving to the back of the mast, we have this empty plastic slot, or I should say a plastic slot here, which can be removed and replaced with the Yakima Handcuff Integrated Cable Lock so you can secure your bikes to the bike rack. You can find this on eTrailer.com. How the bike is held into place, we're going to have three points of contact. We'll have the two zip strips up at the top, as well as one off to the side, which is going to serve as an anti-sway cradle to keep the bike from moving too far back and forth and causing bike-to-bike -bike contact. Also, it does have a stabilization strap for when all four bikes are installed, you wrap it around all the frames as well as the mast of the bike rack itself to keep everything nice and compact while you travel so it doesn't move around. So let's go ahead and take the bike off. To do that, you come to the zip strip and there's going to be tabs on either side. You push those in at the same time. That releases the zip strip. And then we can remove the bike. Put the zip strips back in place just uh, so we don't lose them. And with the bike rack in this position, I'd like to give you a couple quick measurements. Measuring from the edge of the bumper to our outermost point, which is going to be our arm here. <coughs> We've added about 39 and a half inches to the rear of the vehicle. For our ground clearance, that's going to be about 14 and a half inches. And then our, from our closest point, that's three and three quarter to this edge. And coming up here, you can see that it actually has an arch or curved mass. This is going to give you a wider range of space between both the hatch and the mast itself, but also later on when we tilt this away, it's going to give you even greater clearance for when we open up the hatch. We can fold these arms down when not in use. To do that, you come to the trigger up at the top, and this is going to be for when you're going to be parking or putting it in your garage or putting it away for storage. You lift up on the latch, let it come down, and again, measuring from the edge of the bumper, now we've only added about 12 inches to the rear of the vehicle, so that's a pretty considerable difference. When tilting away from the vehicle, you come to the black latch at the front, pull it towards you, let it come forward, and now we have full access to get what we need and plenty of space on either side to do so. To put it back in its original position, just push up until you hear the click. How this installs into the hitch, it pushes into place and we have a pin on the inside here. So this is going to be pretty much a tool-free install. Then you tighten down the speed knob at the end to take out the shake and play and then you can lock that into place so it's going to be secure in your vehicle once everything is tightened down. It also has a collar on the opposite side here. Once that's removed it can be utilized with inch and a quarter hitches. So this can work with multiple vehicles or if you get a class 2 on your Chevy Traverse, it can work with that as well. Because when it is in the inch and a quarter version, it can only work with class twos. And there you have it for the Yakima Ridgeback 4 bike rack on our 2015 Chevrolet Traverse. Here it is on our test course. We'll start by going through the slalom. This is going to show us the side to side action, which simulates turning corners or evasive maneuvers. Next, we're at the alternating speed bumps which will see the twisting action. This will simulate hitting a curb or pothole or driving over uneven pavement. And finally, we have the full speed bumps where we'll see the up and down action, which is just like driving out of a parking lot, garage, or driveway.